All throughout the week, we've been taking a look at, and we will still be taking a look at, Nigeria at 63, following our 63rd Independence Anniversary Celebration. But this time around, the focus will be around the oil and gas industry, and we are taking a cursory look at how we can regenerate the Niger Delta environment. Well, who better to speak on this issue than a son of the soul, somebody who understands the goings on in the system. Aniko Briggs is a human rights activist. Now he joins us virtually, you know, to make sense of this conversation and hopefully through the statements that will be made right here, forge a way forward, well, to make Niger Delta a safer place for the citizens and for anybody who will be there. Good morning. It is a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> first, let us get um, the issue of the environment in some perspective. But uh, thank you for demonstrating uh, such uh, an understanding of the uh, situation of the Niger Delta region when it comes to um, what we give. To, to Nigeria and the, the pains that we suffer in the process of um, giving what we give to Nigeria. Now, whether we do that willingly or not, let us put the, the issue of um, the environmental devastation and the sufferings that we suffer in the Niger Delta in perspective. Number one, um, the, the pollution of the environment did not start with the um, issue of what we locally refer to as coal fire. It started with the issue of the reckless exploration and exploitation of the region and the resources by the oil companies. And of course, you cannot talk about the participation of the oil companies without actually speaking to the, um, the, the joint venture of the federal government with the oil companies. Now, this is one area where fortunately, if you like, for the governors and so, uh, fortunately for the uh, senators that represent us and the um, uh, state assembly members and the traditional rulers, women, youth and everybody um, are not involved, <clears throat> excuse me, in how it is done. Our voices are not heard there. We have no say in how this is done. But one thing is clear, that the level of pollution that we have endured since 1958, when they started exploring for um, oil and gas in the region, is done solely by the uh, oil companies through their recklessness and the federal government's um, carelessness, if you like, and also recklessness of not making sure that the oil companies abide by the rules uh, that are laid down internationally uh, for them in terms of the, their operations and how they should treat the environment in which they, um, they operate and explore for natural resources of which the Niger Delta is not um, is not excluded. The the coal fire issue is the last is the last uh, pointer of the uh, of the devastation, if you like, of the Niger Delta region. That is to say that um, the people who are involved in the cooking of the crude oil to produce um, to produce product, whether it be kerosene or mainly diesel. Um, and petrol is done by people within the creeks and sometimes on the land of the areas of which um, this exploration is done, of which uh, the, the area by Elsa you mentioned, Delta, River State, um, to a huge extent um, is devastated uh, further um, by the uh, by the methods, the crude method in which it is done. Now, if uh, Bofire is given license, and if people are able to apply for license and are able to abide by the regulations of how they should do this, mind you, the oil companies don't do that, so I don't know where they're supposed to actually take their cue from. But I think if they are from the region. Um, they are the environment securing 
the environment ought to be one of the responsibilities that they must take on board. I'm referring to the, the people who are involved in the crude way of producing, um, of producing product by uh, getting uh, the, uh, the crude oil. Now, um, how they get the crude oil, uh, we need to discuss that. We need to know that um, if we allow them to, uh, to buy the crude oil, if you like, or if they are given the crude oil, the way other people are given the crude oil on credit, um, the Third Mainland Bridge and so many developments, Abuja was developed solely on uh, exchange of crude oil. And um, I would actually venture to say gas as well uh, to people like Julius Berger to, uh, to go ahead and put infrastructure down in Abuja, in Lagos at that time and in, um, in other parts of Nigeria. Now, where we have not benefited is um, the area of why can't we then even use the exchange of crude oil and gas to build the East-West Road? Why do we have a situation where the East-West Road is on every government's budget every four, four years, every year of those four years, every government has the East-West Road on its budget, has um, the uh, the coastal line uh, uh, roads that should actually come around the River Rhine area in their budget. And yet, year after year, we are crying that our roads are not good. And who are we crying to? Who are the people that should be listening to us? Well, I'm, I'm addressing Nigerians as a whole at this particular point at the 63rd year of independence of Nigeria, but over a hundred years of the creation of uh, the country called Nigeria, that we have given enough in the opinion of my people and I, we have given far more than anybody has given to Nigeria. And look at the result that we have gotten in, in return. And yet, Zamfara is able to mine the gold uh, to the extent that the governor of Zamfara is able to take gold bars to the then president, uh, Buhari, and show him the gold that is coming from Zamfara. And yet, the governors of the Niger Delta region, the owners, if you look at what you're showing me, there is a personal story on that issue. Because I have a medical situation now from the fact that I have had to breathe in that suit like everybody else does in the Niger Delta. And so I'm not the only one with a medical condition. Many people have medical condition that is associated with this suit that we have had to breathe with. The polluted water we have had to drink and the polluted fish unknowingly that we do eat because that is our source of food. And so when we are talking about um, pollution of the Niger Delta region, it is a very, very personal Indeed, and it very, is. very painful. It is. Unacceptable and unacceptable pollution for in anybody in any part of Nigeria to be in. in and so we must begin to say that we have to stand up and resist, I don't mean violently, but intellectually. Fantastic, resist Madam Briggs. What is happening in the night. Fantastic, Madam Briggs. <clears throat> Fantastic, Madam Briggs. Thank you for your submission. And you've raised so many points. But I'd like to continue from the last point you mentioned. Um, and the question I want to ask is why? Why does it seem like the government is harangued? Why does it seem like the people not have been listened to? Why does it seem like the companies, the operators are just going around doing what they know how to do best for economic gain and the resource curse seem to be central in the region that should be the greatest beneficiary of the resource in their society. The former governor of uh, River State at some point, I think uh, during one of the uh, festivals did mention the people who are behind the scene working against the progress 
of the community where rather than build, rather than allow people build roads, rather than clean up the environment, they want to collect the money for their own gain. The hyper, uh, hyper remediation pro, uh, process, a lot of complaints have gone around that. The reason why there seemed to be a delay, well, apart from the government side, which of course they have a role to play, are some of the citizens who are doing the same work, the same dastardly act where they rather collect money than allow progress to go in the society. What are your thoughts about that? Um, to, be, um, to be very frank with you, and quite honestly, I made that decision um, at, uh, on the 1st of October this year that I will be, if it's possible, because I'm always frank and I'm always truthful, um, and I'm always daring, if you like, um, when it comes to the issue of the Niger Delta, when it comes to the issue of um, um, justice for the Niger Delta region, which is to say that, look, we, the Niger Delta people, we produce the wealth. God put it in the area that we find ourselves in before Nigeria was created in 1914. Therefore, by the law of ownership of land, by the law of what is called uh, uh, being an in indigenous person of a place, of being someone from an ethnic nationality. And that means that you have a language, you have a culture, um, you come from a particular region of over so many years. I mean, for instance, the people of Israel um, eventually went back to Israel what is today known as Israel. So the issue of ethnicity, the issue of ownership have always existed. We're not the first people to be talking about it. So when our politicians and our elders and traditional rulers, people in politics, when they don't live up to their expectation that we have of them, they can no longer rely on our support because there are things that politicians are supposed to um, fight for. That is why they are there. Why would I have a senator that would stand in the Senate, collect money, humongous amount of money, and yet a senator from my region will allow the PID bill, um, will allow the issue of local content, to become what it was not meant to be. Why is it that we have governors who cannot fight against the fact that states are not allowed to explore and exploit for what is in their land? It is in the constitution, I accept. But because it is in the constitution, does not in any way, shape or form mean that we should accept it. It is only what you accept that you will not change. When you don't accept something, you aim to change that something that you don't accept. And so I am no longer sympathetic to the excuses that um, uh, politicians come up with. If politicians feel that their, their job, their obligation to us, the people of the region, is impeded by the people of the region, um, they should identify those people. They, they just shouldn't use a blanket statement and say the people. Which people? We should be able to identify the people. We should not allow situations where we have, name, we have names that really does not belong to faces. And then you hear politicians saying the people, the youths, the boys, men. Who are these people? No, this is no longer acceptable. They owe us a responsibility. I want to see a government that will emerge. For instance, I'm from Rivers. I want to see my governor today to be able to speak up when there is the opportunity to say that this is what my people are wanting. And that is they should be involved in the exploration of oil and gas. The, uh, the refinery in River State, should, we should be partakers of that refinery. The issue of um, gas flaring, for instance, that's another area of devastation 
that a lot of people don't talk about or even are not aware of because I believe that there is a genuine effort on the part of the beneficiaries of the oil and gas um, exploration in terms of the money it provides and the money that is looted from the region that they don't speak about gas. But there is more money that is coming from gas that is coming from oil. And there is more gas. We have more gas reserve than we have oil. And yet we have the Nigeria gas um, flare commercialization program. And this program, I want to ask, because I've just heard that NMPC, NMPCL, Shell, Exxon, Mobil, Chevron, I'm looking at my notes, uh, Total, Ajib, and other oil companies operating in the Niger Delta are saying that are flaring billions and billions, which is trillions of Naira. And yet now they have the government have decided, you know what, this money, <clears throat> we will cap the gas. And what they mean by capping the gas, and they have owned up to this, that they have given 42 companies that they claim they keenly selected, that contested, forbidden. Now, I, I want to ask, my people and I want to know, when was this bidding done? And when was it keenly done? And who are these people that are going to come into the Niger Delta? They're not going to go to Abuja. They're not going to go to Lagos. They're not going to go to um, Katsi. They are coming into the Niger Delta. And they're going to go into the program of gathering this gas that they have fled for since 1958 and make money <clears throat> out of this gas that they're capping. Who are the people that are capping this gas? Who are these people that are lifting oil? Why can't I lift oil? Why can't I cap gas? I can register a company, can I? Not? And then I can have international <clears throat> partners, which I'm allowed to have and then get a license. Why can't I get a license? If I cannot get a license to mine gold yeah. in Lampara, yeah. why should somebody from the north have a license to come and cap uh, gas in the Niger Delta region while I am suffering and ill at like so many, many other Niger Delta people? There are places in, in the Niger Delta yeah. where children are born and they don't know the difference between day and night because during the night, the gas is flared, so yeah. it's like daytime. And during the day, there is daylight, so it's daytime. This mm. psychologically alone, this is a mess for the people yes. of the United Delta, yesterday, today, and even into the future. Madam Briggs, so, so, so many, many concerns uh, around the Niger Delta region that we will be looking at on the show today. But uh, uh, pardon me, we will have to open the phone lines and uh, let's hear what people think, what, the, or the, what our viewers think about this conversation. Just maybe we might have one or few, one or two uh, perspective to the conversation. Yes, uh, I mean, we have laid all the troubles, all the concerns around the region. Like my colleague did ask, I mean, it is also evident that um, uh, the people of the Niger Delta are also accomplices in what has happened to the region. Let's look at the ND, NDDC, yes, NDDC uh, initiative and how it is met, meant to develop uh, the region. In your perspective, what would you say has been wrong? Or why, why has the NDDC not been able uh, to achieve what it was uh, mapped out to achieve? Um, first of all, the NDDC the Niger Delta Development Commission. From day one, I am on record for quarreling with the name, the Niger Delta Development Commission is deceptive. It should be the Niger Delta Development Commission. It should have remained on Pade, which means that it is oil producing <clears throat> states develop, um, initiative because the NDDC is not a development commission. It is described as an intervention agency. It has not changed. It is still an intervention agency. So calling it a developmental agency 
is deceptive. That's one. Now, two, the fact that the NDDC was created is not a gift to the Niger Delta region. It's as a result of people of which my humble self is one. Millions of people, some are not even alive to, uh, to speak about it today, that the, the NDDC was developed on the back, on their sweat, on their blood, on their life, on their sacrifices. Some of us are still making those sacrifices still today. So the NDDC is not a gift, and we're not thanking anybody for the NDDC. It, is, it belongs to the United Delta people. It, it was turned, number three, the politics, the politicians turned it into a political arm um, of um, HDFC, of development, of whatever they want to call it. When it was created, um, you cannot create an agency. Give it to me and then tell me the person you are going to put there without me having an input into, into whom is going to be there. You put whom you like for whatever reason that you like. You um, pick somebody, for instance, who may have run for governorship or senator or whatever and has failed, didn't succeed, and you put him or her in the uh, NDDC and you say it's run by Niger Delta people. It is not run by Niger Delta people. Why don't you, for a change, put people in there that will not accept a note from a senator or from anybody in the presidency to give someone um, a job, a contract to uh, undertake in the Niger Delta region, either to provide water, so-called to provide road, or to provide anything. No, you, you, you may be putting a Niger Delta person there until you put somebody who is not answerable um, to the government in a, in, in a sense that what he does genuinely for the people of the Niger Delta is not dependent on what somebody in the presidency says. Like for instance, today we have uh, someone in the Niger Delta um, Commission, the MD, who is a product of the struggles that I have uh, highlighted of the Niger Delta uh, people from uh, Bayelsa, because the rotational turn of it falls to Bayelsa as at this point. Now, when you put somebody like that there, it is therefore assumed that because he's coming from the background of knowing the pains of his people and his state and his region, that he will then know what to do. Those are the type of people that we want. And then we will hold them accountable. But when you put someone from, uh, for, a particular, um, um, uh, for a particular role he played during election, for instance, in a state, and then he's answerable directly to you, either by, um, by the way the budget is approved or not approved. Now, uh, the reason why the, the NDDC, if you like, have really not succeeded is because the Nigerian government owes the NDDC a lot of money. The oil companies owe the NDDC a lot of money. The federal government owes the NDDC a lot of money. And the, the, the ecological, um, the, the ecological agency has to give uh, money in because we also have a right to the ecological fund and so many, many other things that the Niger Delta Development Commission should be uh, having access to. They don't have access to that. I'm not saying that there is no um, mismanagement. There is mismanagement everywhere. Nigeria's whole is mismanaged. The, the, uh, the Minister of uh, Solid Minerals, Two days ago, also the Nigerians who have uh, Chinese partners who have come to him to seek a license for solid minerals, and he claims that they are the people that are bringing in uh, hoodlums and uh, uh, armed men to come and explore for solid minerals in another part of Nigeria. Now, 
um, when you therefore talk about mismanagement, it's not just in the Niger Delta. So don't put the, the burden of the Niger Delta people squarely on the Niger Delta people. It's not our fault. What we want really is to have 100% access to our resources of ownership and then pay tax to the, uh, the federal government. Let us do that. That is the way it should be done. Let every state, there are minerals all over the place, solid and otherwise, in Nigeria. Let everybody control what they have. Now, if I have a governor, or if I'm the governor of my state, and I don't, um, I'm not able to do the right thing for my people. Indeed. I mean, there is nothing like hearing from the mouth of the person who sees, who wears the shoes and know where it pinches her. And Madame Briggs uh, seemed to be pouring out a lot because of the frustrations that the people around the region, herself inclusive, have been facing due to the degradation of the environment. And how do we get to flip the switch? How do we get to change from the um, degeneration that is being experienced by the people of the Niger Delta to what it should be? From the government perspective to the perspective of the people who are seemingly uh, not behaving very keenly to their fellow men and ensuring that the job gets done of making it clean to the issues around the NDC, well, and the debate of whether the person belongs to the Niger Delta or not. Um, it's been a, quite a lot of submissions and of course the phone lines have been opened. If you are in the region, if you're in Bayelsa, if you're in Benin, if you're in River State, if you're in Delta State, I think it's the time we should be calling in, calling in to you know, let us have your thoughts about how the shoe pinches you. If you don't speak, I mean, who would listen to you? Who would hear you? This is the time where you get to speak. I think if I were to be living in that area, I probably would be screaming out loud every morning until my voice, is, or my voice gets heard. So make your voices known. The people at the Helms of, uh, Helm of Affairs are actually uh, listening and they should be able to do something about it. We have a new minister right now, engineer uh, Babakar Momo from uh, uh, a dose state, Benin City, of course, considered one of the Niger Delta communities. And one question I'd have loved to post, uh, pose to uh, Madame Briggs was, as much as it seems um, that there is some sort of loss of faith in the NDDC, or some question marks for the NDDC, what are the expectations of the people for the new Niger Delta ministers? I mean, we've had governors who are in the Niger Delta for quite a while, David, if I, if I will have to yeah. you know, bring it to the conversation right here. Yeah. Governors who are, have been seeing things happening in Niger Delta, what has been done over the years? What has been done over the years to solve the situation? I mean, if the government, the, the state government also, has the power, the CEO of the state, to say, hey, this company, you're not doing this, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And work together with the federal government, the NDDC, and of course now, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, to ensure that 30 something years later, after the first oil, first droplet of oil was drilled out of that region, things can turn for the better. We shout in the government. I think it goes beyond the government. The people should make it very intentional and should be of one mind and one heart to get this done. I think we have a call from Delta State. Let's hear from you. Good morning. I'm calling respect for the NDDC position we are talking about. Speak with us. We are going through a lot of stress. The team of Shekiri, have we gone through to a lot of place in Shekiri? And it has been really Shekiri for a very long time now. And this issue we are talking about, a lot of schools have been going with the grass, grass too many schools for the task to come from big down to the river. That is my time to go. My own father land, she has run this, they let it to us, nobody can walk. The food are no light, no road, no good things. All the teachers then they receive money and they let it teach the students. The school not a guru. All these things are pressure on the face for the task. And if we talk about using it as a killer, Jeffrey Willie is a trust chairman for the Bhutan. He goes use boys, they go shoot, go finish. He go oppress all of them, collect the money, they go contact, they go Lagos, they go build the house. They go leave all the houses, leave us for so far. My father does that for a long time. They take all the documents from me. All my father land, they sit down in front of the judge. Give us badge, more knowledge that time. I get the privilege to talk to you. 
Oh, you are for me. No, I reach my turn. I'm saying the rush is killing. It's not a king. My name is my son is on my for. My name is a research on the So I, I did very happy to call on her today. So I mm. went there to see her police station. Thank so you. Call her my house. Thank then you. Then I call all the teachers for all security, local government, call for our research, for calling, go inside deep down the village. All the children are both the abuse, the fish, the cash. No one will go to school. Mm. I don't want to stand. I don't want to defend our land. I don't want to rule when they don't want to rule. They're carrying all the people when they call it called Marius. All the Kenan, Kenan has launched the picture of the guy from Ireland, and the Russian security people, they will use gold, kill all of us, kill my brother, my senior brother, oh kill my brother, because of what they kill my father, they poison my father. All right. So, no, no, for me, if you say that, you will reach uh, my time. All right. Jalami, th thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. I'm sure. I'm sure authorities have, have heard this. Uh, it's, it's just, that's, it seems just just hold the privation within the region. We've not even we've never scratched it. Here we are talking about uh, uh, children being deprived from education, and then uh, it's a bigger problem we have in our hands. We're talking about over 20 million out of out of schools children, just two million in Lagos, and it's scattered across other other states. This is coming from, from Delta State, and I'm sure it cuts across every. So it's something that government must be intentional about. Mm -hmm. When I mean government, federal, uh, states, and local governments. But the question you keep asking is, are this, are this, are, is, is this working? Do you have a working local government in Nigeria? It, we all, all we care about is we have the federal and state governments. The local governments are supposed to be the closest to, to the grassroots. However, they are under the armpits of the state governments. God, where the state governments tell them what to do, gives them what to give them for, for what they want to want to give them for. You know, it's a sad narrative. We do have another caller. Yes, we have got a call from Abuja Charles. Good morning. Can you imagine? There's no oil in Kaduna for the good Kaduna uh, refinery. There's no oil now. That could take refinery, and they no have oil. Why can't they do refinery in Bayasa, Alhambra, uh, Boy State, um, Aquai Bomb, all these places where they are getting the resources? They are not key for it. Okay, now, our young youth is dying. Go to prison now. Everybody, all the prisoners that are southerners, no outer man, no Yoruba man. These are governors, are the cause of everything. Now, what Inland the Kano is saying is reality. I, I support that man, despite that I am from South South. I support that man because what he's saying is reality. Our governors are evil. Let them do good for us so that we, we will benefit. Look at, they are carrying our resources, the Bureau of Kaduna, Lagos, Kenya. You are telling that, but we are suffering. What do you think that will happen? What do you think that our young youth will do? Our governors are evil. I, in fact, they, they will not be alive to see their children. Hey, no, that, All right, Charles. Charles, Charles we, we would not allow Charles. you to say that on national TV. We, we, we take yeah. that back. We apologize on behalf of Charles. Uh, we sincerely apologize uh, for, for that statement. However, let's speak with um, Madam Briggs. And um, uh, we just had two callers, and I could, I could feel there are yeah, frustrations, yeah. Uh, very palpable uh, frustrations from the two callers that we've had uh, so 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 far. Uh, but then, importantly, is the place of state governors in this whole conversation. What could the state governments have done differently? Oh, okay, great, wonderful. So sorry that uh, the connection that's uh, internet for you. Okay, um, I had uh, part of what um, the uh, the intervention said. Well. Um, I, I apologize also, but you can see the frustration. Look, it, this, this is generated by frustration, and you can't blame anybody for being this uh, frustrated. There is no reason whatsoever why a country like Nigeria should be in the indexes of um, people, countries that are poor. We have no business being poor. Definitely, the people of the Niger Delta region have no business with poverty. I have said this over and over again. Um, we have enough resources in the Niger Delta for us not to be poor. But when you look at pictures like this, like this young man, 
if you just look at what you're seeing now, people live here. You see a little child there. That little child belongs to one of those people that are working there, should be in school. So now, why would you, why would you put yourself to expose yourself to what you're showing if there is no reason for you to expose yourself? There is every reason for these youths to do what they are doing. And that's why I said that I'm speaking to the Niger Delta people. I'm speaking to Nigerians for understanding. And I'm speaking to my people to actually rise up and understand and take possession of their thinking and make decisions of what is in their best interest under these circumstances that we find ourselves. Our politicians are our major problem because of their failure to use politics for what it is meant for, which is service of the people, service of the region. What are those services? Education, um, um, healthcare, uh, infrastructure, um, entrepreneurship, to be involved in the level of development that is going on all over the world. Look, you have you see what's going on in Africa today. Um, I hope I'm, I'm okay to refer to what's going on in Africa, which is what um, the countries that were colonized by the French ha have woken up after almost 60 years, some of them or more, and saying, you know what, this is not acceptable. You can't take my crude oil. You can't take my gold and put a price on it for me and tell me what you will do with it, how much you will pay for it, take it away and bring it back in some, in some form and sell it back to me. And it is unacceptable. I see no reason why we cannot produce um, uh, uh, televisions. I don't want to give advert to the names of the companies, but most of the components in a television, in motor cars, are byproducts yeah. of oil, the paint, have, the, yeah. uh, the, um, uh, yes, the plastic, the, the chairs, the leather, most of the, pla the uh, artificial leather, most of these things are byproducts of, um, of um, oil, yes, oil, oil, oil products. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take the oil out and Nigerians, Nigerians, not even people from the United out, are lifting oil, crude oil, taking it out, providing jobs for the countries in which they are refined for the byproducts, and then just bringing back diesel, kerosene, petrol, us, and telling us how much. And then you have Nigerians who are supposedly mm. bringing it in, taking crude oil out, yes. bringing it in, and now, and now we're told we are paying them. Niger Delta is paying them because the money is from the Niger Delta. As offensive as some people may think this sounds, the mm. money is from the Niger Delta. Indeed. And then you come with crude, with, with uh, petrol, uh, diesel, kerosene, and you tell me I am paying you um, um, subsidy to sell me back Indeed, what Madam you are Briggs. taking for free. What you have taken for free, they didn't even pay for it. It's Indeed. the same thing with the dollar. People are given dollars to sell to me. Thank you, Madam Briggs. Um, I mean, see so the passion with which she's speaking is so difficult to get her to stop. I mean, we've heard from the Niger Deltans what their dreams are for the region and for the nation in general. Madam Briggs, we wish we could continue this conversation for the sake of time, but we need to put a pause on it today and hopefully engage you further subsequently also to get your thoughts about how the progress is so far with the Niger Deltas. And in your break, thank you so much for joining us on the conversation this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless.